Today's lecture is on how to bow straight. To bow straight basically means that you want to stay parallel with the bridge, somewhere between the bridge and the end of the fingerboard. Um, now it seems easy enough, but the problem is that from the perspective of the player, you can't see whether your bow is slightly back or slightly forward. So. What you want to achieve is that you have some control on how to stay straight. Um, now, there's two parts to the bow, the upper half and the lower half. So what I would suggest you do is you just make your arm in about a straight angle and place it somewhere in the middle between the two strings, uh, between the end, the end of the fingerboard and the bridge, somewhere there, yeah? Now, first thing we're going to do is stretch your arm. What you have to do is to stretch your arm forward, yeah? So, you stretch and you bring your elbow forward, you leave the right shoulder completely relaxed. Don't do this, so. Yeah, so, stretch forward. When you're at the tip, it's here, your wrist, it will be inverted, and then it comes straight again. The elbow comes forward, the elbow goes back again. Now the other half, you're again going to bring the elbow forward, make sure the elbow doesn't do that, but the elbow comes forward like that, and you bend the wrist towards you, and it passes in front of you. So we start again. At half the bow, not a straight angle, and now you just bring the wrist in front of you. So elbow forward and wrist towards you. Go back, now stretch forward. If your violin is too far to the left, then no matter what I do, I cannot keep the bow parallel. So make sure that you bring the instrument, it stays on your left a little bit, but make sure it is in front of you. The further to the center you are, the less you have to stretch with the right arm. The easier it becomes for your right shoulder and the muscles in your right hand. Yeah, um, but of course, the payoff comes here. You have to bring the shoulder forward. Um, and that's a little bit more tiring there. Now, one of the things you have to be aware of is that in the beginning, make sure that your hand, if you've seen the lecture on how to hold the bow, I hope you have by this point. If not, I would suggest you do have a look at that lecture. Your hand doesn't move. Don't lose control of the bow. Maybe your thumb is a little bit more straight when you're towards the tip than when you're all the way back, but make sure that your hands, your fingers don't slip over the bow or get all bunched together or start grabbing the bow. Just very relaxed. Don't even grip the bow. Just guide it. Stretch forward. Bend the wrist towards you. Second part I want to talk about is the upper half, arm. Now, a lot of people in the lower half of the bow definitely, when they come in, instead of bringing the elbow forward, you do this and you can hear what happens. 
as the elbow comes up you start pressing down automatically with your index finger and it chokes the sound um, you can learn to control that but it's definitely not a solution you always have to come forward with your elbow yeah? that way you can always stay relaxed it's very important now I'm going to do a first play through with you it's going to be very slow I'm going to play every string twice it's the first part of the first exercise but I'm going to give you four beats time to double check in a mirror or ask a parent to make sure that you're still straight and then you play the next note each note is going to be two beats long one beat is going to be 60 so it means one second per beat so it's going to be like two notes of playing one, two, and then we're going to do four beats of nothing and now we do it again yeah so um yeah, every note twice, from the lowest string all the way to the highest, and all the way back. Sorry. If you can't use the entire bow in the beginning, use the middle, for example, and then expand over time, that's okay. This is just an introduction. Make sure this is easy before you start running through the first exercise for real, um, because there I will expect you to already have some basic relaxed movement because then things get a little bit faster yeah so very very slow two beats per bow and four beats of rest so one two three four five six two three four and so this was the first playthrough now a couple of things we're going to do this again but a couple additional things you can pay attention to for example if your violin is too low and you're relaxed here this is going to happen yeah it drifts and that's because the strings point down make sure your strings are horizontal just be relaxed support your instrument either with your thumb which is how you will be playing later you support the neck or you can just hold it here whichever you find most interesting right now you have to concentrate on the right arm um, second thing when you do the string changes yeah make sure that at the end of the note after the second note when you're back at the heel yeah so you drop uh, make sure that you take enough time to be prepared yeah now two more things the sound quality you have probably done the first run through now there's two obvious things to help you out about how to hold the bow one is when the sound is like this then you're pressing down too much you should relax but 
it can also be that your bow is too far away. If I would do the same here, I would get an aggressive sound, but it would be still a sound. You would do the same thing there. Yeah. So that's too much pressure. Yeah. The other thing is the opposite, when there's not enough pressure. Then you have. And that is if you're very light and you're near the bridge, it's going to squeak. Playing near the bridge is for loud playing. Playing near the fingerboard is for quiet. So you want to play really quiet, then you're going to do that. Yeah. So these two problems are easy to recognize. If it crunches, if you choke the sound, you're pressing down too hard, you're squeezing probably too hard, or you're too far away. Or when it squeaks, either you're going too fast, or you're too close to the bridge, or both of course. So in that case you have to slow down or pay attention to where your bow is. Try to keep it in the middle, between the two. Look here when you play, and during the rests, then have a look in the mirror to see is my arm straight or not. Yeah, so I'm going to do this again, same exercise, same run through, but this time you're going to pay attention that when you do the string changes, you do it at the end of the note before the string change. So every other note is going to change. Same exercise, same speed. Use as much power as you can and try to be better every single time. Yeah, so stretch forward and wrist in front of you and stretch forward and wrist in front. So, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and change strings now. And we're going to stretch forward. Three, four, five, six, and wrist in front of you. Turn to the next string, drop the elbow. Stretch forward, and we're going to bring the wrist back, and drop the elbow, all the way, and straight bow. strings elbow comes up a bit six and keep stretching forward and the wrist now and and change strings six five six and now we change strings again elbow all the way up So, and that is your introduction to straight bowing. Um, practice this a lot. The quality of the sound, the beauty of the music, it's all going to depend on controlling your bow. Your bow has to be close to straight at all times. So don't tense up your shoulder. Don't lock your shoulder because then you're going to end up doing that. Don't overdo it either because then your bow might drift or you might just... So, important, wrist towards you when you're at the heel, with your hand at the instrument, arm completely stretched, and when you're near the tip, yeah, if you can't reach, bring the violin in, the upper arm, this line, yeah, and the bow, they move together. When you're all the way stretched, it automatically does, but even when you come towards the heel, make sure that the upper arm stays at approximately the same level. So basically the, the height of your elbow helps you indicate what string you will be playing on. Yeah, so good luck with all this and repeat this for a couple of days. Uh, when you get better at it, there will be lots more exercises on straight bowing, string changes, different rhythms, plenty of you to enjoy yourself with. So good luck and uh, Hope to see you in the next lesson.